as exciting as any big victory they've had this year when the defense that shuts them down on the goal line. The Northwestern Wildcats have shut out the Wisconsin Badgers. 35 to nothing. We're going to a bowl game. It's just now it's a matter of where we're going. It's a matter of where we're going. And this team's going to fight and fight and fight until we make it to the Rose Bowl because that's our goal. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the Gary Barnett Show with the head football coach of the Northwestern Wildcats. I'm Dave Ennett, the Wildcats, 6-1, 4-0, leading the Big Ten again this week, ranked 8th in the nation after a 35-0 homecoming victory over the Wisconsin Badgers in front of a sellout crowd in Evanston. And, uh, Gary, this was one of those days that just seems to be made for college football. Well, it was one of those things, one of those days where everything went right for us, and uh, uh, we we deserve one of those days every once in a while, Dave. And we had one, uh, got a lot of momentum in that game, and uh, but we we went out and uh, played the way that we thought we could, and we were very aggressive. Uh, we knew it was going to be a physical game. It was it was uh, a matchup of two physical teams, and we wanted to win that physical matchup. Gary, what was going through your mind in the late stages of that football game? Well, I was uh, I just didn't think I'd ever be able to sit there with 10 minutes left, stand there with 10 minutes left in the game and uh, be ahead of Wisconsin 35 to nothing. But uh, everything that could go wrong went wrong for them and, and went right for us. And something sometimes those things happen. We've had enough of those things happen to us. And I was just felt real fortunate that it was happening to the other guy this time. One thing that did go wrong to you, and you haven't had injuries, but Sam Valenzizzi, your tri-captain, the leading field goal kicker in the nation, uh, gone now with a knee injury. And Sam's a very popular player. He's a popular player uh, on campus, popular with our team, and popular with the media. Everybody likes Sam. And so, uh, but Sam's got a new role now. He's going he's gonna to be a, a student coach. And so he's going to have to take Brian Goins and, and get him ready to play. And as he said, he had a role in this victory, which was your sixth, to give you a winning record. Exactly. And uh, Sam's, Sam's still very important uh, the rest of this season. And uh, I'm going to put pressure on him. All right, well, we're going to take a look at this victory by the Wildcats, 35 nothing of the Badgers, as we continue on the Gary Barnett Show. I mean, it was the first time I've seen the stadium packed like that. And, I mean, there was times where I just look up and just... I mean, it just brought a smile to my face and the energy that everyone brought about. Welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show. We're coming to you this week from the N Club, located in McGall Hall, which also includes Welsh Ryan Arena. And, Coach, this is sort of the a Hall of Fame as far as Northwestern's concerned. It is, and it also uh, houses our training table. We um, eat here in this uh, uh, facility uh, every night. Uh, except uh, Saturday nights, and it's uh, it's a tremendous place. Our kids can walk right out of practice and come right up and have dinner. Well, tell us what your message to your players was going into the Wisconsin game. I felt like uh, we had created a, a, and earned some attention around the country, but I didn't feel like we'd really earned the respect maybe that, that we deserved. Uh, and if we wanted that kind of respect, then we were going to have to play uh, a, particularly way, a particular way in this game. And, that we, from the time that whistle blew, we would have to put our ears back and go after them. And uh, sure enough, that's just about what happened. That is what happened. Let's take a look. The Wildcats and the Badgers. The first sellout crowd in 12 years jammed Dyke Stadium for this homecoming battle between the Wildcats and the Wisconsin Badgers. Northwestern on offense first. Paul Burton punting and the first turnover. First one of seven, uh, David. This is uh, Shane Graham making this recovery and it's heads up uh, special teams play. And uh, this this play uh, allows us to uh, score in this first opening drive. And then uh, this is a screen pass to Matt Hartle, and uh, he picks up about 10 yards. You convert two fourth downs on this drive. Here's the first one. And both of them were quarterback sneaks, and Steve gets about two on that one. And then you're going to see just great surge down here and. Uh, Steve gets, uh, gets up there and gets a good jump and goes in the end zone. And uh, that was a fourth and one. And uh, we, we actually thought about kicking a field goal there and decided to let him go for it. Now we're about to see another turnover on the ensuing kickoff. This is just a great play by Josh Barnes. You'll see him number 17 come in. He makes the hit, strips the ball, and recovers it. And, uh, and so it's two turnovers in a row. And that, that's great special teams play. 
So the Wildcats already leading 7 to nothing. Go back on offense here. Well, we missed a field goal in this attempt, but this is Darnell on a nice run, about a nine-yard gain. And uh, we get down, that's one of the few, that was the first field goal Sammy had missed. And then come right back with, uh, give the ball back to Wisconsin, uh, change the downs there, and uh, Fitz makes a big hit. He's playing great football. He was our line champion this week. Your entire defense was named Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week, an interception here by Chris Martin. Well, this is uh, Chris's second pick of the year, and he's, He's had two and three games, and he's starting to look for those things now. That's a nice play. That sets you up at the 21. Balance is he on for a 32-yard attempt. The first one he played the wind and knew he shouldn't, and this one he just stuck right in the middle and gives us a 10-0 lead. And the defense, Gary, kept the pressure on Darrell Bevel all throughout that first half. Well, this is Ray Roby uh, putting the pressure on Bevel and taking him to the ground, and it, we had seized some momentum at this time. And here's McCullough coming through, and you see William Bennett strips the ball. And then uh, Chris Martin's right on it to recover the ball, and they gave it to us right about two inches from the goal line, and we had to try to punch it out of there. But that was a great special, great play by Bennett and Martin. Later in the second quarter, Steve Schnur on the scramble, 26 yards. Well, this is, I think, the first or second scramble of the year for Steve, and uh, that was a big play in this game. And uh, he starts doing these things, we'll be, uh, we'll be dangerous. You convert on a uh, third down play on a pass to Dwayne Bates and Autry here again. This is a nice play, a uh, little wrinkle that we put in for this game, and then uh, Steve hits uh, Bates over the middle down around the eight-yard line and allows us to uh, kick another field goal here. Sam Valenzizzi will come on for a 26-yard field goal attempt to make it a 13-0 lead with about a minute to go in the half. That turns out to be Sam's final field goal, as we'll see, but it gives you a 13-0 lead at halftime. So Gary, a 13-0 lead at halftime, uh, and once again, your team had proven opportunistic, cashing in on the turnovers. The, f the first one, uh, uh, I was disappointed that we didn't kick that field goal through there, but the, uh, the second one, uh, Sam was right in the middle, and then uh, we had we'd created some turnovers, our special teams had created some turnovers, and, and uh, they were not able to move the ball. And I felt like our defense uh, really had honed in on them, had a good plan, we knew what they were going to do, and and uh, they were going to have, I felt they were going to have a tough time going the full length of that field to score on us. So we, we felt like we were somewhat in control, even though we were going to kick off of them second half. Well, we'll be back and take a look at the second half highlights after this. Well, after seeing what they've done to, to Notre Dame and, and Michigan and Wisconsin today, uh, I don't think they can be considered underdogs uh, the rest of the year, which means that uh, with a little good fortune uh, with Michigan beating Ohio State down the road, you could see this team in a Rose Bowl. Welcome back. At halftime, the Wildcats were leading the Wisconsin Badgers 13-0. And Coach, what did you have to say to your players? I felt like we had a lot of momentum at halftime. And the one thing that I want to do is make sure we uh, continue that momentum and so I told the kids to, uh, to think back and remember what it felt like before they took the field for that first uh, kickoff and, and how hard and how much they wanted to play and how much they wanted to win that first half and I wanted them to retrieve those feelings again before we went out for the second half and go out there with exactly the same attitude even though we were ahead I want to go out and seize the momentum that we had and attack the second half the way we did the first half well, evidently it was message received. Let's take a look. Gary, 13-0 early in the third quarter, and the turnovers continue. Well, this is Pat Fitzgerald. He strips the ball from uh, McCullough and Joe Reese right there to recover it. And heads up play by Joe and great, great play by Fitz. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, things had to be falling apart over there on the Wisconsin side. And here you're going to see a lateral that uh, Darnell's going to take about 32 yards for a touchdown and good blocking out in front. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a big play at that point in the, in the game. That gives the Wildcats a 19 to nothing lead. The Badgers back on offense, and Carl McCullough found the going tough against Pat Fitzgerald. Fitz and uh, William Bennett there put the stops on him. Fitz had a good day uh, without question. Another guy had a good day on defense, Hudefa Ishmaeli, your D-back champion. This is a great play. He almost intercepts this ball, and then... You're going to see him come back here in just a minute and uh, get a quarterback sack with uh, Tim Sharp. Now he comes through here, goes down, gets back up, chases Bevel, and then he and uh, 
shark combined for this sack. And that's, that's relentlessness right there. Well, as we mentioned, Bevel was under pressure, and here, one of your veteran players, Mike Warren, is going to come up with the interception. This was great for Mike. Now, he's stumbling and rumbling here, and Jeff shines down in front and uh, blocking for him. He didn't see the guy over to his left, but that's a great play for Mike, and uh, just another turnover and a lot of pressure by Matt Rice on Bevel there. Uh, we're going to take it in with his toss. And see Matt Hartle out in front with a great block, and then Darnell actually he does a lot of that on his own. He gets it in the end zone. 26 to nothing now, the Wildcats in control, and Darnell Autry with two touchdowns in the football game. And still there were uh, other big plays on your special team. Cecil Martin slips here on the return. Well, and Sam uh, was celebrating when he did. He came down on his knee wrong, and uh, he's, uh, he's hurt that pretty badly. He's going to have surgery this week, I think. This will be a pass to Simmons, who fumbles, and Don Holmes recovers. When it rains, it pours, and uh, like I said, momentum is, is so critical in this game, and that's what we had going for us. And this is Brian Goins uh, kicking his 40-yard field goal, and I hope that's uh, just a sign of things to come. That makes it a 29 to nothing Northwestern lead. And now the defense again. Well, this is uh, Cecil, and this is, uh, I think they had 38 yards, uh, minus 38 yards in rushing at one point in time. All right, now in the fourth quarter, you get to play some of your young guys, Lavelle Brown. Lavelle Brown, a great block by uh, Kevin Peterson, and uh, Lavelle's been in this end zone before, and he's going to make sure he gets there again, and that's a great play, and it's nice for a freshman to come in and be able to do that. And, and this is the last play of the game. You see Jeff Shine uh, hold the edge, and then Chris Rooney comes up and dislodges the ball, and we actually have another turnover. The time hadn't run out, and you see our fans are going to take uh, – take the field. It's just a great celebration and it's just a great feeling to be able to play at home like that. So Gary, your defense comes up with seven turnovers. You're plus 16 now in turnover margin, number one in the nation. Remarkable stat and it's really probably as important a stat as a football team can have. Uh, the seven turnovers were the story of the game. Uh, I haven't been on a team that's either given up seven or, or taken away seven and so uh, it gave us a short field on offense all day. You see, we only had 12 first downs, and uh, we, ha we had the ball so close to the goal line that it was, wasn't really necessary for us to do any, any more than that. We had uh, 221 yards in net uh, rushing, and then Paul Burton punted for 45.2 yard average, and in that, which, which we don't have on the board, was he averaged 4.2 seconds in hang time, and this is the third week in a row now that we have recovered a fumbled punt that it's been kicked so high that the opposing team has not been able to field the ball. And that, again, that's critical special teams play. 35 nothing the final, and as you would imagine, there were some happy Wildcats after this one. I've been waiting five years for this stuff. It's finally all the hard work and everything else is paying off. This is incredible. This is the best moment I've had as a Northwestern football player. You guys are going to a ball game. And we're going to a ball game. It's just now it's a matter of where we're going. It's a matter of where we're going. And this team's going to fight and fight and fight until we make it to the Rose Bowl because that's our goal. This is one of the greatest feelings in my life right now. I wanted to beat these guys since I went up there my freshman year. It was just cold and miserable, and we, and we got our, our uh, butts kicked. And I, ever since then, I wanted this game. I don't care what the country says. It just felt like uh, to be a two-and-a-half point underdog or wherever we were, uh, given the situation, that, that people just sort of thought we were uh, Cinderella, you know, and that sooner or later the glass slipper was going to come off. And, and so, uh, you know, that didn't look like Cinderella out there to me. Well, we're Northwestern, you know. It, this it wasn't like this before with all these people in here. And now all of a sudden we win a few ball games and how you guys doing, you know. It's nice to see you all. <laughs> it's the truth, though. It's the truth. What has it been, 23 years or whatever since a winning season? And, and like I, I've been saying since after the Notre Dame game, we still have a long way to go. You know, we got, you know, got Illinois this week. They're a, a tremendous ball club, great defense. But for us to get respect, we have to get victories. And, uh, you know, we got six now, and we got a few more left to get, and then I think we'll get our respect we deserve. Welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show. One Wildcat player who can speak to how far the team has come is senior tri captain, free safety William Bennett who has started 38 consecutive games for the Wildcats, going back to the third game of his freshman year, which was this coaching staff's uh, third game as well, William. Uh, just give us an idea of what sort of changes you've seen over these four years. 
Uh, well, as soon as I came in, um, it was one of the things where uh, I didn't know what to expect as a freshman. And then uh, after I got a chance to get out there in the field and play, uh, you could just see where we had the chance of going out there and competing against anyone, but it was whether or not we believed it or not. And it took us three years um, until like really late last season to to the point where we believed that we can play against anyone, and it, then it carried over to this season, and here we are today. You were part of Coach Barnett's first recruiting class, and you come from Tempe, Arizona. Now, what mm -hmm. convinced you to join uh, the Northwestern program and, and come here from Tempe? Well, Tempe, uh, that's a long way from home, really. But the thing is, um, what happened, there was a lot of coaching changes that went down um, during my recruiting um, process. And uh, Northwestern came in at the right time, and uh, they offered me a scholarship. I came and realized that it was a, a great choice, uh, coming in from the foundation and starting to build a program up, and here I am today. You are the third leading tackler in Northwestern history, and you're part of a defense now, which as a unit was named Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week after the win over Wisconsin. That's really? got to make you feel wow. good. Wow, yeah, that's, that really feels good uh, and to be recognized as a, as a defensive unit collectively um, putting together uh, uh, a dominate, domination effort against Wisconsin. This has got to be just the way you would have envisioned ending your college career. To a point, yes. Um, it's one of the things where I still want to, I have some teams on my list that I, I want to beat. Uh, <laughs> you know, the rest of these four games are going to be pretty tough, and these are the four teams that I really want to beat. Uh, and to finish out the season 8-0 in the Big Ten, it's a great accomplishment for me. What are your future plans after my, college football? My future plans is, uh, uh, I'm right now studying pre-law, and so to go into law school afterwards, uh, the people are talking about I have a chance for uh, pro professional football. And so it's one of the things where this next year after the season, um, everything's really up in the air. I don't know uh, what's going to happen as far as the draft. Uh, and then, of course, law school is going to be sitting there waiting for me. Well, you have a lot of football still to play, uh, yes. at least five more games. Five William, more congratulations games. on a right, great career you. here at Northwestern. Now, part of every homecoming weekend, the parade, the rally, everybody was out celebrating at Evanston homecoming 1995. This brought us live from Wisconsin. Hey, we've been here every year. We every haven't year. just jumped on the yes. <laughs> every, year. every year. Even when it was ugly. We were here when we were 0 and 11, and we're going to be here when we're 11 and 0. <laughs> <laughs> this year, this is a really big sense of excitement in the air because we're five and one. We beat some good teams. We really feel like we can beat, win today. Then we can go to a bowl game. So everyone here is really excited and glad yeah. to be here. And the beer bucket. Wow, there's a lot of chili going on. The beer buckets out here. What do you got in there? Woo! We got Rose Bowl Bound Rose Bowl Bound Chili. Rose Bowl Bound. That's right, Rose Bowl Bound. This is the greatest I've ever seen in here at Northwestern. My first saw out at this place, I mean, it's just great. All the all the people here, it's really a great thing. I'm, I'm glad all these people are out supporting the Cats. It's about time we get some respect. As long as we keep on producing on the field, I can expect everybody out here to be screaming and yelling tomorrow. Make it a real home field advantage for us in the sell-out crowd. We have caught everybody's attention, but we don't have everybody's respect. Uh, we're playing at home, at homecoming, a sellout crowd. We're ranked 11th in the country. We're playing. Yeah. We're playing the number 24 team in the country, and we're two point underdogs. Now, I don't figure that out. about that as you are and so tomorrow our mission is to go gain this university some respect. Thank you. Well the Wildcats certainly stake their claim for respect with Saturday's convincing victory over Wisconsin. Up next the Fighting Illini in Champaign. We'll preview that game with Coach Barnett after this.
other quarterbacks have been having a rough year, well, they always seem to play well against us. So, you know, we're going to have to find a way to shut down their run, just like every week you can't win the Big Ten unless you stop the run and, and hopefully contain their passing. And, you know, their defense is going to hold our offense to, in check, so hopefully we can pitch another shutout. So, Gary, it's on to Champaign, the battle for the Sweet Sue Tomahawk Trophy. This was the site of probably one of your most memorable victories early in your career at Northwestern. It was the second win of the year for us, uh, and we, uh, I think we were down 21-6. We came back and won that game, and uh, it was a remarkable game for us to win down there. But the last two years, we really struggled against this team, and uh, especially last year, we didn't play particularly well, and they have a tremendous defense. They have probably uh, nine guys on that defense that'll be playing in, in the NFL, and at least two first-round draft choices, and probably the most athletic defense that we're gonna play all year. And uh, offensively, uh, they've shown flashes of being spectacular and, and, and then they haven't been very consistent with it and so we've we've got a tremendous challenge it's a great rivalry for our kids um, you, everybody throws the records away when they play this game I know uh, I can look back and see the records of, uh, of Northwestern upsets when when they should never have upset and same thing with Illinois so we've got our work cut out for us it's a great it's a great test for our kids I have a great relationship with Lou Tepper. We worked together at uh, Colorado for a long time, and uh, you know we're just anxious to play again. Believe me. Do you think you can find uh, room in your trophy case for the Sweet Sue Tomahawk <laughs> Trophy? We don't have a lot of trophies, and so I don't like <laughs> to give those trophies away. All right. Well, good luck on Saturday at Memorial Stadium, Coach, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Dave. And that'll do it for this edition of the Gary Barnett Show. For the coach, I'm Dave Bennett. Thanks very much for being with us, everybody. We'll see you next week.